Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to develop a custom Moodle block. This session is simply another step in that process. In this session, we will discuss the HTT post. A very simple example. Here we have a form using the POST method. And then the action is going to be view PHP. So it's, it's going to send, POST is going to send the values in these three input, four, three input fields, actually four, if you want to include the submit button, because it does have a value. To this, to the server, and to the, then to this, this specific file. Then, passed to the server through a dollar sign underscore post array, which is which is a global array, and it will contain all of the value all of the names and values of these fields so the name will be first name last name city and state and that will be paired with the, the it'll be a key value pair of these items even the button the submit button and sometimes getting the submit button is useful because you can do you can add some logic to your program as to what, if you have multiple forms on a specific page, and then which one was clicked. You, you know, you might be wondering why we're going to go through some of this real basic, this fundamental stuff. And the, simply the reason is, is that this is really the basis of the most complex, one of the basis of some of the most complex web applications. There's an interaction between a browser and a server, a browser and a server and a database. So that's really the why of why I'm going through this. Just I'm just supposing that some of you haven't seen this. If we open up a browser, we can here we're on that page and if I hit cancel, it'll tell me that the cancel button was clicked, not the submit button. And that's what I was saying in terms of uh, that you can use some logic in your in your program to determine which which button was clicked. In this case, the submit was not clicked. So we print out this little statement about the cancel button was clicked. If we go back and just add And then submit we can see here that the values the value the key value pair of first name Michael last name Peters city and state top and East Washington and then there is there is the button that was so this is a case on any form that it will come over in a post array and you know some some languages will abstract you away from from this level or some frameworks but that's what's going on underneath you do want to always validate any any data that comes from a form clean it scrub it make sure that no harmful scripts are being trying to be uploaded onto your site or into your database and then maybe eventually onto your site so, so that's really about it. I mean, in terms of, of the post, there's not much else to it. Again, 
when you have a form, the values are are submitted or transferred to the server through a post. Let's take a look at Firebug. And we can actually see. Let's go back and post that again. Okay. So there's the post. So what we've done, we've we've started Firebug. If you haven't installed, if you don't have that installed, you can find it on any of Firefox's sites for for their plugins. And so we have this console. This you click on the dot or the net, all, and then here we have the post. Well, it shows us the headers. And here's under the post, you'll see here's the information that was actually sent to the server over port 80. And then here, here's how it is received by the server. Again, there's a key, key equal, then the value. The key value pairs are separated by an ampersand. That's really about it on the on the on the post. There's not much to it, but I did want to, you know, just touch bases on that. Here you can see how you can intermix HTML and your PHP. This isn't necessarily the best way to do this, but it's you know it's something on simple applications. You know you, you can get you can get by with doing this. A more complicated application, you probably want to investigate one of the frameworks, and they separate your each of your like each of your concerns: your data layer, your presentation layer, and your logic layer. Your, before we quit this session, there's a couple things I want to touch bases on. And I want to set up a new session. The, the, the black and blue contrast just is too hard to read. And I just want to see if we can't lighten that up a little bit. And also do one other thing. So we want to do the colors. Use system colors, and then also we want to go under window. We want to add three zeros to the end of that number, and this is just what it says it is. It's just a scroll back feature. It's the number of lines that you can scroll back through in your uh, terminal window. So we'll go ahead and just rename this one. Little project. Save it. And then let's go ahead and open it. And this might be easier for us to read. Log in with your default account. And let's go to root. Well, let's... I've created an alias. That takes us to us to our document root, and the way you create aliases is you have to be in the home directory of the user, the current user. The way you can get to that home directory is just by typing in cd. Now we're in the home directory. Type ls hyphen la, and you'll see the dotted files. That are associated with this user account. Let's vi bash rc. And in here you can see that I've created this alias. Use the keyword alias with a space. Then I've did the dr, in this case document root. No spaces between the equal sign and the first single quote. And then you just type in the command and the path that you want use and then close it with a single quote. Once you've done that, you'll actually have to open up a 
new session a duplicate session duplicate or a new session doesn't matter and then re-log in and then it'll pick up the change another item that I mentioned the other day was I wondered why the server picked up the index PHP even though it wasn't listed in the directory index in the Apache config file. The reason for that is there's a separate configuration file for PHP. So let's go ahead and go to conf D and there's the there's the reason why right here here's the reason why that index.php worked and even though it wasn't explicit wasn't in the default apache config file if you need to ever go back to any of your configuration settings that you made when you first set up your project just right click and then go to properties and you can get into the configure the all the settings that you made when you first initially set up the project and under the upload files you know you might consider using the manual manually uploaded files versus the on save there may be situations where that might be more useful or you might be more comfortable with doing that well i think that's about it on this particular session and the next session we'll talk about Git and uh, a database connection. So we'll, we'll see you then. Thanks a lot. Bye.